Looking at our first story this morning, Night Vision News' Annika Wall sat down with Waverly's two mayoral candidates. Both were given three minutes to talk about their week. The order was presented for the unedited interviews was determined by a coin toss. Joining me now in studio is Adam Hoffman, a mayoral candidate for Waverly. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So my first question is, why exactly are you running for mayor? Well, I think there's a, a lot of things that we can improve on in our community, uh, making sure that we look at all avenues of listening to people and representing them to the best of our ability. Okay. What do you want to accomplish over the next two years if you were to be elected? I think the biggest things that we can accomplish is finishing some of the tasks that have been on the back burner for a long time. I think the Green Bridge is one of the big ones that's a, a, a big hit right now, getting the ball fields off to a successful start for the youth, and again, listening to our constituency. So specifically, what do you think should be done with the Green Bridge? I think we need to have a replacement there, especially when we have the Bremer Avenue Bridge going to be taken out in a couple of years to be replaced. So we need another avenue for emergency services and just general traffic. Speaking of everything going on with Bremer Avenue, what do you feel is the best plan of action? Uh, in regards to configuration or what can I... More of the configuration, uh, three lane versus two lanes. Okay. Back in 2016, we had a, a resolution that said that we needed to wait until uh, the Cedar River Parkway was open and we had the traffic study from this coming spring. Once we have those things in hand, we can revisit it and see if it warrants a change. If it doesn't warrant a change, then we'll leave it as three lane. Okay. In your opinion, what is the best plan of action now for Champions Ridge, considering everything? Well, you know, Champions Ridge uh, was declared as dead, and, and then they've acknowledged that fact. I think we need to move on to the three separate entities, just like the youth ball fields has moved on to their own plan. We need to look at what the fair board is going to do. They're having a meeting on the 18th of November, see what their plan is, and then also address the, the adult softball programs as well. Okay. For you personally, what do you feel as though sets you apart in terms of leadership? I think a lot of the leadership skills that I've developed in my career history in law enforcement where you are making very important decisions oftentimes uh, that people aren't going to like, but you have to make a decision uh, with reason, but also taking the time to listen to them to come up with that decision. Okay, you've talked a lot about voices. How do you plan on making sure everyone's voices are being heard on certain issues? Having office hours is a key thing, having your phone number out there for people. Uh, making yourself available. You can't just sit at home and expect people to be able to reach out to you. Social media is a big hit this uh, day and age with this gen uh, next coming generation, such as yourself. And you're probably more comfortable uh, messaging someone through social media than picking up the phone, and we have to be receptive to that. Okay. Uh, how has your past influenced your decision to run for mayor? Um, I've always been involved in some way, shape, or form with politics, either in being a supporter of you know, people running for office, uh, I remember being really young and, and walking in parades for political candidates and, you know, handing out pads of paper and pencils and those types of things. Uh, so being involved I'm sorry. In, That's about all the time we have for okay. today. Thank you so much for coming in. No problem. Thank you. Of course. Here in studio now is current Mayor Dean Soash. Thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome, Annika. So I guess my first question is just why are you running for mayor again? Well, the answer I give in jest is I haven't received enough abuse yet, but uh, realistically uh, I'm running because there's still unfinished business uh, to do for the city. Uh, listen to the people and uh, be a liaison, so to speak, between the city staff and, and the citizens of Waverly. Okay. What are some things that you want to accomplish your next two years if you were to be reelected? Continue work with the youth ball diamond project that's currently underway. Uh, begin con conversations on the green bridge, uh, Third Street Bridge. It'll always be green regardless of what color it is. But most importantly, I think I have a connection with the citizens, the majority of the citizens, uh, citizens anyway. Uh, maintain off that I can continue to grow and develop. I maintain office hours at City Hall, so I, and my phone numbers and email addresses are, are very public so that they can get a hold of me. Okay. In your opinion, what should be done with the Green Bridge? I was on the original task force in 2002 or 3, the recommended replacement of that bridge. Uh, due to some circumstances that didn't happen, 
There was a, an effort at one time to set aside funds for repair of the bridge before it got into condition it's in. But I've always maintained that that, that was put in as a neighborhood bridge and it still is, needs to be a neighborhood bridge. But obviously updated and and I think in the budget year of upcoming budget of for 2020-2021 that we'll begin talks on trying to fund engineering so that we can so that we can move down the road to get that reconstructed. Okay, how about uh, Bremer Avenue? Bremer Avenue is going to remain as it is uh, until the traffic study is done in the spring of 2020. We don't expect to get the results until mid-year and depending on the results of that study, what happens? But I, based on what I see now, I'm not sure anything will will change. Okay, what do you feel sets you apart in terms of your leadership? I've dealt with the public one-on-one -on -one for almost 60 years due to my previous, you know, I'm a retired electrician at a 57 year career or 57 year career as that where I dealt one on one. And I think that's my strength is that I Okay, have, I'm uh, sorry, that's all the time we have today. Okay. Thank you so much yep. though for coming in. Not a problem. But hit just about right. Yeah. So. The election is Tuesday, November fifth. To vote, students living in the Manors or Knights Village will go to Bartles Retirement Home. Students in all other residence halls will vote at the Waverly Fire Station. All voters are required to bring either a State of Iowa driver's license or their voter registration card.